Hi, this is Steve. Real change comes from daily practice, but new practices can be hard to create. Habits aren't things that continually require effort or are occasionally done. Habits are automated and repeated. The following practices are based on research on how to start habits and make changes. Get really specific. Instead of, I'll exercise more, your new habit might be, I'll walk outside or inside on a treadmill for 20 minutes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 5.30. If you don't make it specific, you open up to daily decision making, like, how long should I exercise today? What kind of exercise should I do today? When should I do it today? Decision making is hard and it means you might make a decision to not do the thing. You want to take away your daily decision making as much as possible. Get clear on why you're doing this. Don't follow shoulds like, oh, I should exercise more. I know it would be better for me. I really should be doing that. Instead, think about what you hope to gain. Maybe exercise is going to make you feel better, give you more energy. You want more energy? That's why you're exercising. Add new habits to existing habits. The best practice is to add your new habit into a routine you already do. For instance, I already have breakfast every morning. Let's add my exercise habit to my breakfast habit. After I have my breakfast, I will go on a walk. Ritualize it. What's the cue? What happens right before we do the thing we want to do? Name the time and the place or what happens just before. Will you put it on your calendar with a reminder? If it's a practice dependent on a cue that could come at any time, then get clear on the protocol. For instance, when I catch myself thinking negatively, I will question my negative thinking. If it's something that might vary day to day, like do something purposeful, then the ritual could be to add a specific purposeful activity to your to-do list in the morning assuming you have a ritual of having a to-do list every morning, and then prioritize it. So for me, I do a to-do list every morning. I prioritize the things I want to do, and I wind up doing the things, like maybe the first three things, every day that is on my to-do list. So if in the morning I say, okay, here's the purposeful thing I'm going to do today, I'll give it a number two, I'm going to do that. You also want to automate things as much as possible. So say you want to save money, that's an easy one. Do an automatic deduction from your bank account, from your checking into your savings account every month. Set it up once, don't think about it again. So again, we're ritualizing it, we're making it something that is a routine, it takes the decision making out of the situation. Make it convenient. Say you want to eat better. You want to put the healthy things in front of you and the unhealthy things away from you. Say, I don't want to put a bag of Fritos on my desk because I'm going to wind up eating those. I'll put the bag of Fritos in a cabinet above my refrigerator where I have to get on a step stool to get to them. Whereas, let's put a banana or an apple on my desk and then I'm going to eat that. Sean Aker in his book, The Happiness Advantage, uh, he wanted to learn the guitar, so he put the guitar in the middle of his living room that made it convenient and more likely that he would play the guitar. Make it easy. If it's overwhelming, you might not do it. So make tiny changes instead of big ones. Make it so easy you won't mind doing it. For instance, going for a walk. So a 20-30 minute walk sounds maybe a little difficult. So instead of having the habit be the walk, have the habit be after breakfast, I'm going to put on my shoes, plug in my earpiece into my iPhone, open up a podcast, and step out the door. Now that takes maybe two minutes at the most. Once I'm out the door with a podcast and my shoes on, it seems kind of silly to turn around and go back into the house. Another example, I want to keep my house tidy. Instead of, I'm going to clean my entire house, make it, I'm going to spend one minute cleaning my house, or five minutes cleaning my house. That's easy to do, 
and you're more likely to actually do it. And once you get started, you might decide to just keep going. Make it fun. When I'm going for a walk, I listen to a podcast. That makes it more enjoyable for me. When I'm walking on a treadmill, I have a tray on the treadmill, and I'll put my computer there, and I can watch a video while I'm walking on the treadmill. So, make it fun. Respect yourself by keeping your self-care appointments. There's a tendency, I think, to put ourselves last, to say, oh, my client needs me right now, so I'm going to forget about my walk. I'll just deal with my client. Or my kids need me, so I'm going to spend less time on my self-care and more time on them. Well, think about how you're showing up for your clients or your kids. Are you being the best person you can be while you're with them? There's a lot of talk about sustainability when it comes to the earth. Are we doing practices that are sustainable for the earth? Well, think about are we doing practices that are sustainable for us? If we're not taking care of ourselves, if we're not sustaining ourselves, then we can't be the best person for the rest of the world. Reward good behavior. Rewards release dopamine and reinforce the behavior that you want, or they can reinforce the behaviors you don't want. Intrinsic rewards are best, meaning that you really feel good doing the thing, but you may have to have an extrinsic reward, especially if you're just starting on a new habit. For instance, you might reward yourself with a small piece of chocolate. Maybe you'll do a little victory dance, or you'll just say, yay me, good job. How will you reward your small successes? Make sure you give yourself those promised rewards. And maybe you could have a milestone reward. If I exercise all seven days this week, I'm going to give myself a mocha latte. Log it. Use a journal or a checklist to track your progress every day. You can say, yes, I did the thing, or number of minutes spent, or a number of miles, or you can rate from 1 to 10 how good you think you did that day on that task. Consider posting your log online on a Google spreadsheet uh, for sharing it with other people. And then try never to skip two days in a row. So what will you do to log it? Get support. Who will you ask to provide support and hold you accountable? Now, groups are better than a single person. For instance, Weight Watchers is going to be beneficial to you if you want to lose weight. And you don't want to rely on a single other person in order to ensure your success. You can set yourself up to succeed on your own and then have one single person who just helps you uh, provide some support. But you shouldn't have this set up so that if their support goes away, you completely get off task. So support should look like encouragement, recognizing good effort, asking you to take a stretch, asking what you might do differently to improve your outcomes. Let your accountability support partner know what you want to hear from them. Make contingency plans. Consider what might derail you and come up with strategies ahead of time to deal with those situations. Now, I'm not talking about if you get sick and just can't exercise, that's understandable. But let's say you go on vacation. How are you going to keep up your exercise routine while you're on vacation? Figure that out. Be persistent. Understand that habits take time to form. And if the current strategy isn't working, then consider a new strategy. So that's everything I wanted to cover. I wish you well with your new habits. There are links to videos of experts on YouTube in the description of this video. If you like this video, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.